live, I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. So while we have life this morning, let us stand as we sing, praise him, praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he is worthy to be praised. Let us sing with joy. Let us sing as if God has been with you all week. Let us sing as if God has brought you out of something this week. Amen. Let us sing together. Praise him. Praise him. Testing. We'll try that again. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> Sorry about that. I hope that everybody's been served with a bulletin. I am here to highlight a few additional announcements for you. And inside your bulletin, there is an announcement about apple picking tomorrow. If you would come join the seniors in the Adventure Club for an apple picking quest to Hillcrest Orchard for the Apple Picking Jubilee, the hours are 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Admission is $10 per person, and that includes an apple, ma apple tree maze, cow milking, wagon rides, mini golf, trike rides, a petting farm, and many free activities for the family. That address is Hillcrest Orchards at 9696 Highway 52 in LJ, Georgia. If you have any further questions, please contact Sister Clarice Penn or Sister Audra Samuels for more information. Also, the Georgia Master Guide Retreat will take place October 28th through October 30th, and that will be at the River Oaks Convention Center in Orangeburg, South Carolina. The Eat for Health class is tomorrow at 10 a.m. 
till 12 noon, and they will be featuring homemade nut milk. For all the singles, come and join the singles ministry at the Atlanta Hawks preseason game against LeBron and the Cavaliers on Monday, October 10th at 7.30 p.m. If interested, please contact Deborah Clark at 770-877-1799 for more information. For all the married people, the Married Lovers Retreat for 2017 has now opened its registration. Rooms are limited. The retreat's gonna take place in Hilton Head, South Carolina, and you can register online at www.adventsource.org. I will now acknowledge today's and next week's birthday celebrants. Celebrating a birthday tomorrow is Steve Williams. On Wednesday, October 5th, we have Ardette Rogers and Diana Archer. For Thursday, October 6th, John Cross, Marlene Edwards, Dominique DeHero, forgive me for mispronunciation, and Ann Reynolds. Amen. On October 7th, we have Idris Campbell and Amaya Newell celebrating a birthday. Amen. And we have two wedding anniversaries. On Monday, October 3rd, Pastor and Mrs. Brenda Barber are celebrating 34 years of marriage. Amen. Amen. And on October 6th, we have Brother Michael and Sister Ann Reynolds celebrating 31 years of marriage. Amen. This is the second reading for Sister Sarah Patterson, transferring from Shiloh, from the Stroudsburg SDA Church in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Cheryl, if you stand, Sarah, will you stand? Where are you? I did see there. She is. You, you see that smile? That's indicative. She loves being here. So we we we're glad. And so let's vote. Let's quickly vote her on in. Uh, then, is there a motion that we would vote? Second. Uh, this. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed, same sign, it's carried. If someone will escort her up here, elders, if you'll join us, you know we always give the first hand of welcome. Right. And at the end, we will welcome her officially from the congregation at the door. Uh, she'll come. Elders, if you will join us. Uh, bring her right on up. All the elders will join us up here and we'll give her. Watson, is Brother Watson here? He used to do a welcome today. Well, if not, then I've been designated to do the welcome. Huh? My name is Derek Watson. In the form <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I know it's customary to have those who are visiting with us stand, and, and we're going to keep that tradition. 
stand and just bellow out your name. We have a microphone, I believe, that we've got one down there. Uh, we're always interested who comes to visit with us so we can uh, encourage you to stay here with us. And uh, so at this hour, at this moment, we would like to have those who are visiting with us to please stand. If you're visiting with us today, if we have anyone, to all. Uh huh. And if you will just tell us your name and also just tell on who invited you here and uh, we'll go on from there. All right. My name is Elvira Bannister. This is like the fourth time I've visited. I don't feel like a visitor anymore, but I haven't been transferred yet. So once I'm transferred, I'll stop standing up. Oh. <laughs> All right. My name is Pastor Yavish Nyakango. Um, I attend Open Door Seventh Day Adventist Company around here. I was invited by the guest speaker, Pastor Long. It's my first time to be here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm Cassina Stevenson, and I'm just passing through. Well, we, we're glad you passed through here. Now, since we, you've introduced yourselves to us, and I think it's now courteous that we introduce ourselves to you, right? And so, as you know, there is a tradition here. As a matter of fact, Shiloh has a warm smile and a warm uh, fuzzy fuzziness about them. We're going to let you experience that by saying welcome, and also we're going to welcome each other and say how glad we are that you came to church today. If you're not glad, then sit there. But if you're glad, go tell someone about it. At this time, let's all go and welcome one another to our service here at Shiloh.
testing, oh, it's the right mic. Um, there's going to be youth church in the in our fellowship hall, ages 14 through what? 55? 29. 29. 29. 29. 14 through 29. And so don't you all go back there. You stay right here. Youth church in, the, uh, in our fellowship hall going on at the present time. Now that we've all been welcomed, we all feel that we're here at home, right? So we can worship God and uh, in the beauty of holiness. Just a couple of announcements. I think the health department of our church, our health ministry, all right, has something they would like to mention to us. Uh, how many of you have enjoyed our journey with health this year? How many have enjoyed it? We have been so encouraged to do better with our health. And so let's hear something else from our health ministry. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Shiloh. So as we know, we had our annual Taste of Shiloh a couple weeks back. During Taste of Shiloh, we always have a blood drive that goes on. And we're so thankful and proud of our church family and community. We gave about 25 units of blood. Amen. And so it's really good because each unit of blood can get, save three lives. And I think that's really amazing because in the black community, we are in less percent of less than 1% of donations. And that's in the nation. That is very sad and not good because a lot of us deal with different blood issues. If we go into the hospital, a lot of the time we need some type of blood trans transfusion or something like that. So we need to help our own people as well. So with that being said, on November the 12th, which is a Sabbath, we will be having another blood drive. And this one will be in honor of Brother Dwayne Callender. So when Life South Community Blood Center comes, we will be able to donate platelets, which is something that he needs. And there are plenty of other black people that are needing this or people in general dealing with blood cancers, as well as red blood cells and whole blood. So we want to do even better this next time. It's going to be directly after service. So everybody here should be able to donate and stay around and donate so that we can really help our community, help our people, because we want to save a life. The Lord did not give man knowledge and technology for us to be able to take the blood from the body, sterilize it and do what we need to do and give it to somebody else to save a life. He didn't give us this blood that will replenish itself. There's no reason to worry because our blood's gonna replenish itself. So we really want people to come out. Starting next week, we will have a sign up sheet. I will be out in the foyer and I'll be up here for the next few weeks. So remember November 12th, that's a Sabbath. It'll be directly after service. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Oh, come on, say amen. amen. Aren't you glad that you can do something to save a life? It's fantastic. Just a couple of quick other announcements. This week, we're going to start a mini revival. Well, it's going to be all week, but uh, the first four nights will be here at our church, and then the, the last two nights will be, well, I'll still say Thursday night. Let me just kind of help explain. Uh, Dave, if you'll come on up here, fast along, and... Uh, kind of tell us, uh, how many have these flyers yet? Have we passed out these flyers yet? We have Hope Alive Revival, and the Southern Union pulled us together from South Atlantic and Georgia Cumberland to work this year and trying to bring hope to those who are hopeless. And uh, so this week, this is our speaker for this week. Come on, say amen. Yes. My good old buddy. I didn't put an emphasis on old buddy, too. <laughs> but uh, tell us about uh, these next few nights uh, we're going to have here at our church. As was mentioned, uh, the whole week is devoted to evangelism throughout the whole Atlanta, Georgia area. Many of the churches, uh, more than 20 churches uh, between South Atlantic and Georgia Cumberland will be uh, experiencing evangelism throughout the week. Here I'll be speaking from Sunday night until Wednesday night, and then on Friday night, and on Saturday night at the, what's the name of the church there? Greater, Greater, Greater Travelers Rest Church in the uh, Decatur area will be the last two nights where Elder Roger Fernandez will be the speaker. We're encouraging all of you to please come out and support this week as well as Friday night and Saturday night at Great Travelers Rest. On Friday night, the, uh, the tally... The tallies will be in concert on Friday night. Elder Fernandez will be preaching Hernandez, and then on Saturday night, Lionel Harris will be in concert. 
So we ask you to please come out and support. And let's pray for those who have been studying and preparing for baptism that God will move upon their hearts and that many will make a decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ all the way. Amen. As you see in your bulletin there or your flyer there, we're going to start at 7 o'clock each evening and finish by 8 o'clock. Is that all right? Amen. And folk, we're going to pray and take a each night to pray something specific. The first night, Sunday night, we're going to be praying for our community. Come on, say amen. amen. We're going to spend time praying for our community. On Monday night, we're going to be spending time praying for our families, our families, our families. On Tuesday night, we're going to spend time praying for, we're going to spend time praying for nothing specific but our children, all of our young folk, praying for them. And then on Wednesday night, we're going to be praying for, specifically for the meeting, the we weekend meeting, that God will, will, will bring someone to his side. And as you see on there, I'm excited when we all, when we, when we fall down, shame was my game. Can't we all get along? And then Wednesday, money, money, money. Now, we're not singing that song up in here, but uh, you understand he's going in that direction. 7 o'clock, 7 to 8 o'clock, we'll begin here. Now, on Thursday night, there's no meeting. But on Friday night, we're going to stream live because I know that it will be difficult for you to get from your job over to Greatest Traveler's Rest on Friday night. So we'll stream it here. We'll stream that meeting here. So you'll come here and we'll be plugged into the service over there. And then on Saturday night, I want to encourage all of us to go over to Greater Traveler's Rest. You'll get directions and spend some time over there uh, with them bringing all the churches together. My mic went out. All right, uh, and so we'll do that. Now, let me just tell you one interesting event that's going to take place today. I hope they're not listening. As you notice, the peers are not here today. Uh, they are um, on a little retreat with their family. This is their 50th wedding anniversary. Amen. Amen. They do not know, and they have no idea what's going to happen. At 1.45, if church is not over, I'm going to my office, I will be doing the renewing of their vows via internet. Aww. They have no idea this is going to happen. So this is going to be a surprise, and it's set up. I'll be FaceTiming them. I wanted to do it with those who wanted to stay by, but we weren't able to get the technology together to do that right now. So. We'll do that. And then when they come back next week, we'll sing happy anniversary to them and do something for them. Is that all right? Yeah. We were going to announce it before, but they would have known, so we could not announce it. And uh, so they have no right. This is going to be a surprise. Collaborated with her daughter and with them. They're in Tennessee at a retreat area. And so we'll be doing via pull it up and FaceTiming them and plug in with them this afternoon at 1.45. So let's have a wonderful time worshiping our God and Savior. Uh, we have special guest announced. Where are they be? Where are they? There they are. <laughs> Just a little Ebonics and all. Uh, they, they're not here to do the sing-off. We're not having that here. There ain't no sing-off up in here. But they're here to do us uh, some wonderful music we have committed in the house with us today. And uh, they're going to be here to sing some special music for us. Glad God gave them safe traveling mercies to get here. He must know they needed to sing here, so he got them here. And we'll hear them in just a little bit. Also want to encourage Oakwood is having, of course, their annual uh, college days, October 5 through 9, and if you have an interest, and I sure hope, uh, you, I'm, you're not going to get mad at me. I'm pushing church school. I, I'm not, I am not, I am not apologizing whatsoever. Our young people need to be in our school. 
and I've said it over and over again, and I mean that. You saw just what happened the other day, a little boy in Anderson, South Carolina, Townsend, South Carolina, where I pastored, a little boy the other day went to school and shot his teacher and two others and killed his father in that school up there. What he was mad about, I have no idea. Our kids need to be where they're safe. They need to be guarded by us. And if they come in and, and get us, well, that's fine. But we're doing what God said. But I'm pushing church school. Yes, Our young folk need to be where God can hold the reins in their lives. And so you will hear more about that. But we got to do something to help save our young folk. Also, one other baby announcement. Um... <laughs> If you will stand, Mama and Daddy, for a minute, I just want to let folks know there's, in the oven, something's brewing in the oven. Wow, amen. Kenneth amen. and Ronnie, amen. they are amen. having a baby. Amen. And we welcome that in this church. We seem to be, somehow the water is good in this church. Because we sure have been having them up here. That's all right. So let's keep young adults here at our church and so we can keep replenishing uh, our children's ministry. May the Lord bless us real good. Let us all stand as we sing welcome into this place as this morning's prelude to worship.
Amen. Amen. We are the children that the Lord has delivered from the hands of the enemy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know about you this morning, but I have come to his house with praise. Mm, bless the Lord. Because the Lord has done so many, so much Amen. in my life. Mm. It wasn't my alarm clock that woke me up this morning. No, sir. No, the cross cell phone <laughs> that woke me up this morning. <laughs> But it is the angel of the Lord that touched me this morning and woke me up. And that's the reason why I can say with David this morning, I am glad when I said to myself, let me go to the house of the Lord. Why? Because I will always bless the Lord. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So magnify the Lord with me and let us bless his name together. For I saw the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They tell us the angel of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him. So all taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is his name. So let us praise his name this morning, Shiloh from all our God who blesses us. Recite John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not son to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved let us remember our fourth commandment and recite it Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid servant, thy maid servant, thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made it. See. Let us pray, our Father and our God. We are grateful that you are here in this place with us. We're asking, O oh Father God, that as we have come into your house, or that you will allow your spirit to manifest himself in this place. More than that, Father God, may he transform our lives. Uh, we came here today, Father God, because we desire to experience a greater experience with you. Uh, we want to be more like you. Uh, we want to express 
your character in our lives. And we want others to say that we must have been with Jesus uh, because of the way we treat others and because of the way that we walk and the way that we talk. Oh, God, do something uh, magnificent in our lives. And we'll give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor because you are more than worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. There's no need to stand up for the right unless you're gonna stand up against the wrong. Tell me how you're gonna ever stop being weak unless you make your mind up to be strong. Well, you got to do right, cause it won't be long, it won't be long. I can tell you that it's easy to let your man be. And it's just as easy to love your friends Tell me you will have to love like the Bible tells you You have to let the love of God come in Well, you got to do right Cause it won't be long, it won't be long Don't you want to love him better? Don't you want to love him more and more? And can't you hear the Savior knocking? He's knocking at your door. Don't you want to make haste to meet your maker before you have to deal with the undertaker? He will take you right now if you are willing. Don't you know the Bible is fulfilled? Well, you got to do right, cause it won't be long, it won't be long. Don't you want to love him better? Don't you want to love him more and more? And can't you hear the Savior knocking? He's knocking at your door. Don't you want Make haste to meet your maker before you have to deal with the undertaker. He will take you right now if you are willing. Don't you know the Bible is fulfilled? Well, you got to do right, because it won't be long. It won't be long. You got to do right or live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right, oh, live a life. You got to do right.
morning, church. Good morning. It is a time when we all can participate. God has been good to us this week, hasn't he? He woke us up, take us to work, bring us back. And it's that time when he has given to us or loaned to us what he has entrusted us with. This time I call the deacons to come forward to receive the talent and offering. And while that is being done, we'll have another number by the beautiful committee. Let me tell you good news. Good news, the cherry is coming. So glad the cherry is coming now. Good news, the cherry is coming, and I don't want it to leave me behind. Good news, the cherry is coming. So glad the cherry is coming now. Good news, the cherry is coming, and I don't. cherry is coming so glad the cherry is coming now good news the cherry is coming and i don't want it to leave me behind good news the cherry is coming so glad the cherry is coming now good news the cherry is coming and i don't want it to leave me behind
all the tides into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, for what you provided for us this week. We thank you for the work you have provided for those who have worked, those who have not been able to work for one reason or another, for unemployment, unemployed. Lord, we ask you to provide for them. So we thank you for the gifts and the givers and the don't givers. And one day when we shall meet with you, we shall all be able to praise you and worship you for what you have done for us. In your name, amen. an oversight. Our babies can never be left out of church. Never. So we're going to have a children's story for our babies. Our babies have to have a children's story. And uh, so Jesus loves all the little children. Come on, bring our babies on. And we got the baskets. We don't have the baskets. In. All right. Singing. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Good morning, boys and girls. All right, y'all can do better than that. Good morning, boys and girls. All right. Okay, so today's story is about two girls named Brittany and Maria. They wanted to go to a birthday party, but their parents said they had to clean their rooms first. Who had to clean their rooms? I know I got to clean my room. Me too. Okay, so while cleaning their rooms, Brittany got a little upset because she was tired and she decided she was gonna throw a brush at her mirror and the mirror broke. And when the mirror broke, it made a loud noise. So their parents came and asked what happened. Brittany didn't want to get in trouble, so she lied and she said that she didn't do it. She said that Marie did it, but Marie said that she didn't do it as well. So since no one wanted to tell the truth, their parents said they couldn't go to the birthday party. Thank you. Maria went um, Maria went to Brittany and was like, um, you need to tell the truth because I want to go to the birthday party. And Brittany was like, I'm scared though. So they both decided that they're going to go tell the truth. So Brittany and Maria went to their parents and decided to tell their parents what happened. Their mom said, if you would have told me what happened first, you could have both gone. But now that Brittany, you told a lie, you can't go to the birthday party. 
So the moral of the story, it's better to tell the truth when asked first, than lie and get in more trouble. All right, so now you guys are gonna go pick up your offering. One boy and one girl to pray, please. Need a boy. I need a boy. I need a boy. So thank you for this day. We love you. In this we pray. Amen. Amen. Send him back. He wants to pray. He's going to cry. Let's send him. Bring him back. Tell his friend to bring him on back in. Yeah. Let, let's, come on. Tell him. Come on. He wants to pray. And they, we're never going to stop somebody who wants to pray. Amen. Come on. Tell that little baby. It, no, let him. Come on. That's okay. Bring, bring him in. He, he's going to cry until he prays. So <laughs> we don't want him to be the weeping prophet. Bring, bring him on, mama. He, we got time for him to pray. Come on. Amen. 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 That's what this is about. Come on. Come on. Okay, your time to pray. Come on, pray for us. Here it comes. <laughs> 
everyone and happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading today is taken from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The word of God says, I read in your hearing. The word of God says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. May the God of heaven bless the adding of his word. Amen. Amen. problems, she's lost her car, relationship problems, just a whole lot of problems. But she ended her conversation by saying these words to all the listeners out there. She said, you know, I worked hard on my problems. She said, but when I work I work, but when I pray, God works, and that stuck with me. When we work, we work, 
but when we pray, God works. Somebody ought to say amen. And this morning I, I stand here with no polished, elaborate words. I just come to lift up Jesus. And now there might be someone out there this morning who have something that you're thankful for may have something that you want to praise God for. You may have a need that you want to ask him to provide. And if you do, I'm going to offer you, I'm going to invite you to kneel for intercessory prayer. And if you want to come to the front, we invite you to come as we talk with God the Father. thankful this morning, Lord, that you have allowed us to come into your house of prayer. Uh, we thankful, Lord, for this privilege that you've given us to bow before your holy throne. And Lord, as we bow before you this morning, we want to acknowledge that you alone are righteous. You alone are holy, just, and good. And because of that, Lord, we come confessing that we are sinners. This week, many of us have deliberately turned our backs on you because of the attractions and things of this world. And so we ask that you would forgive us for our sins, our iniquities, and our transgressions. Oh, Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayers this morning. We want to thank you for giving us all a reasonable portion of health and strength. We want to thank you, O oh God, for bringing us here. The fact that you brought us here lets us know that you're not finished with us yet. And we thank you, Lord, for the encouraging thought of knowing that you're not finished with us, but that you have something for us to do. And we pray that you would help us to hear your voice so that we can do what it is you would have us to do. Lord, we want to lift before you this morning all of the sick and afflicted among your, among your people. I was asked to mention in particular Sister Cross, Sister Clark, and Sister Cross. Sister Clark has a sister and a niece who are both suffering with cancer and Lord we ask that you would go very close to their bedsides and comfort them and Lord we know that you can heal your people of any sickness or disease if it's your will for the Bible tells us that there were cities that you walked through and as you passed through everyone was healed of, an, of their illnesses. There was not one sickness left because of your holy presence. And we know you can do it, Lord. And if it's your will, we ask that you would heal all of us of these sicknesses and diseases and, and problems that we have, Lord. But if, not, if it's not your will, help us to carry this cross. We pray, Father, for the things that are happening all around the world. Even in the political world, Lord, if it, 
it's, it's almost funny and, and shocking what we see happening. But we know you set up kings and you bring down kings and, and that you're in control of everything that's happening. Uh, we see things happening throughout this earth, Lord, and, and we know that you're only trying to tell us to get ready for your soon uh, second coming. So we ask that you will heal this land, oh God. Lord, and right here in our church, there are people whose hearts are breaking, whose hearts are broken, broken. People who are suffering, oh God. And we ask that you would go very close to our brothers and sisters right here. And then, Lord, even us, we ask that you would help us to be more caring. Help us to be more loving, Lord. Because one day, all we're going to have is you and each other. So help us to bond together and love one another right now. Finally, Lord, I want to pray for the speaker. You've brought him here to be with us today. And we don't believe it's a coincidence, but we believe it's a part of your divine will for him to tell us something. And so we ask that you would bless Pastor Long in a mighty way. That you would take, as it were, a hot coal off the altar or some hot bread out the oven and fill him. And as you feel him, may he deliver it to us. We pray for our pastor and his wife, that you will continue to bless them as they lead this flock right here in Shiloh. All the department heads and each and every member, this is our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. together. Um, my good friend, good friend. You can tell someone who has been raised or reared in the way of God. As we worked together in Indonesia, he always was steady in his walk with God. Always steady. And it was a joy to be there. And I must admit something kind of funny. Um, now, I'm no basketball player. He could really play some basketball. We decided to go to a park over there one day, and I think the temperature must have been over 100 degrees. And on the court were some elderly gentlemen who were playing basketball. So, you know, we wanted to get in trouble, so we decided we'd play them. Now, we already knew that we had them whipped because of their age. I wish you could have been there. 
Those men ran us silly. They fast break on us like you have never seen a fast break before. And I'll never forget us going back to the sideline, wiping our brow and said, man, what in the world did we just do? Come to find out that those men played semi-pro basketball. <laughs> and we had so much fun. When we were there, uh, Pastor Long let us let out as we worked with the hospital and prison ministry. It was our privilege to become friends with the warden who allowed us, by the grace of God, to get a prisoner from Australia freed who had been there on a drug charge. And we made an agreement. If we get him to the airport and on the plane, would you let him go? That's unheard of. They allowed us to bring singing groups in. That was unheard of. And I wish you could have been at our church service. It was filled with more people than here today at our service in the prison. But it was a joy to work with Pastor Long, David Long, from Miami, Florida. Yes, Pastor Long is now a union representative in personal ministry, prison ministry, and stewardship. And he has consented to come and be with us for these next few days together. And so we're glad to have you, Dave. Glad to have you. And uh, after we hear the special music from Committed, then God will use our dear brother and pastor, David Long. Praise the Lord, everybody. Before we hear the word of God from his manservant, we would just like to uh, thank Pastor Barber for having us. Can you say amen for your pastor, amen. for your leader? We uh, pray that you continue to encourage him as he uh, leads you all in this part of the vineyard. But we're so glad to be here with you. Um, the wonderful Shiloh Church family, you guys are awesome. And uh, we just want to remind you this morning that no matter what you're going through, the God that we serve is bigger than it. We serve a God who is amazing, who is awesome. He is truly indescribable. There's no word in the dictionary that can describe how great he is. And so we're going to sing about that before we hear the word. of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. should go, or sees heavenly storehouse laden with snow, imagine the sun soars to its light, yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night, none can fathom, indescribable, uncontrolled. 
unattainable. You place the stars in the skies, and you know them by name. today. We really appreciate their ministry. We thank God for the privilege of being a part of this worship service today where they were the special music. I feel honored uh, to have them sing today. And uh, let's give another hearty amen. Praise God uh, for committed in their ministry by the grace of Almighty God. Also want to thank your pastor, Pastor Barber. As he mentioned, we have, go, we go back uh, quite a number of years. And uh, back to our Oakwood days as we spent uh, some time together there as student missionaries from Oakwood to Indonesia for a whole year. I was there and he stayed a second year. And uh, so I thank God for the privilege and uh, pray that he and his wife continue to be blessed by God as they serve and minister here in this part of the vineyard. As he mentioned, I serve at the Southern Union Conference where Dr. Ron Smith is the president. Many of you know Dr. Smith and I pray that you continue to pray for him as he leads our union. Uh, the Southern Union Conference comprises the eight southeastern states uh, with all of the conferences, Georgia Cumberland Conference, South Atlantic Conference, Kentucky, Tennessee, South Central Conference as well, South Atlantic, Carolina Conference, Florida Conference, Southeastern Conference. All eight southeastern states, we cover that territory uh, then in that territory, there are close to 285,000 Seventh day Adventists. And we ought to say praise the Lord. And uh, we praise God for all of those faithful members uh, throughout this part of God's vineyard. And as those of us who serve there at the Union, as we travel to and fro, we pray that God will continue to keep us and all of our pastors and our leaders as we travel to and fro throughout this part of the vineyard as well as throughout the North American uh, division and beyond. Uh, Pastor Barbara, once again, as we prepare for this week, I pray that those of you who are here today will encourage yourself to come out these next few nights and also encourage someone else to come out as well. Uh, did, did everyone get one of the brochures for this week? If you didn't get a flyer, just raise your hand. If you did not get one, does, uh, the ushers, we have a, do you have any more flyers here? Oh, my left and uh, my, my right, my left as well. Ushers, do you have any of these flyers? Anybody have some flyers here? Well, hopefully they should have some at the, at the desk on the way out. Uh, please be prepared, prepared to pick up one. Uh, tomorrow night, when we fall down, is our message on tomorrow night. On Monday night, shame was my game. On Tuesday, can't we all get along? And then on Wednesday night, money, money, money. 
And so we're encouraging everyone to please uh, pray that we will be blessed by the meetings and allow the Spirit of God uh, to use uh, me to speak and also use you to receive that which God has for you by the grace of Almighty God. I believe that all of us desire to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Am I right about that? And uh, by God's grace, let's prepare ourselves as well as prepare others to be ready and be in that number. Uh, my wife could not be here today. She's helping out there at Marine where our membership is with the children's ministries. But I thank God for her in the uh, close to 35 years that he's given us uh, by the grace of Almighty God. We have two sons, David Jr. and Derek, and our youngest, I mean, then we have four grandchildren. Anybody here got grandchildren? Yes. Amen. Well, you know that grandchildren are the best, praise Almighty God. And we thank God for our grandchildren. Thank God for our sons, our daughter-in-law. And uh, we praise God for what he has done in their lives. I want to also thank our musicians today. Appreciate your ministry. Praise team, thank you for blessing our hearts today. And I also um, am grateful uh, for this opportunity uh, to share a word for the Lord Jesus Christ on today. I got a surprise when I was in, came in church today. And uh, one of my play daughters is here today. And uh, little Aaron from Detroit, Michigan. So Aaron, I'm glad to see you today. And um, praise God that you're here visiting uh, one of your good friends. So it's good to have you uh, here in the congregation today. I know her mother and father from many, many years ago. Let's go to the word. What do you say? Amen. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says, if any man be in who? If any man be in who? If any man be in who? Christ. Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation, the new international version says. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let's, let's read that together one more time. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm tired of our message for today. My past is not my present. My past is not my present. This week our theme is keeping hope alive. And the enemy of our soul wants us to remain discouraged. He wants us to live defeated lives. He wants us to always think the worst about ourselves, even though God himself thinks the best about us because he loves us so much. And so today as we look to God's word, I pray that God will speak to each one of us that we may experience the blessing that God has for us. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for bringing us into your house one more time. We ask, oh Father God, that you will allow the spirit of the living God to do something special for each one of us. We all recognize that we have, were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But we're thankful today, Father God, that there is the promise to those who accept Jesus Christ a new birth. We ask, O oh God, that you believe, help us to believe in the power of that new creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 My past is not my present. Is anyone here today who doesn't have a past? Is there somebody listening to my voice today and your past is crippling your present? Has someone here come to the conclusion that their past 
will always define their present as well as their future. The verse we read just a few minutes ago declares that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. But because of the way we think, which is oftentimes contrary to scripture, the word tells us that if we are in Christ, old things are passed away. But we continue to allow our past to heavily influence our present. And today I pray that God will help all of us to, to recognize that, that God's word is greater than uh, what my past declares or even what my bad mind says. You see, we are often uh, times uh, driven by what we think is truth instead of being driven by what is truth. And if we would allow truth to direct our lives, we would not find ourselves oftentimes or as much under the burden of that which the devil always places on our back. Now our past, our past, we, we're guilty. We're guilty of the things that we did in the past. And, and the word of God makes it very clear. We have all sinned and come what? And come short of the glory of God. But I'm thankful today that's not the end of the story. Anybody glad today? I, I, I'm glad today that just because I got a past, my past does not have to remain a, a part of what takes place from this day forward as I move into the future by the grace of Almighty God. But the enemy tells us a different story. In the book of Revelation chapter 12, the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. Anybody ever been accused by that brother before? He, he likes to accuse us and remind us of the things that we used to do, of the things that we were engaged in that were contrary to God. And he tells us that because that's what you were involved in, you are that and you will never be anything different from that. But Jesus tells us a different story. And I'm glad today that God tells us a different story because if that were not the case, we would all find ourselves moving forward with the burden of the past over our lives and on our backs. But based on the word of God, Jesus, Paul tells us if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. And I thank God today that my past does not have to define my present or my future. As, as wicked as my past might be, uh, as tainted and, 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 and as my past might be, I don't have to continue to allow it to dictate my future. Now let's be clear. Everybody is not going to allow you to forget your past. You got some folk who like to remind you about your past. Because uh, when, you, when God starts uh, moving you up, and I, I'm glad tonight or today to know that, that the God that we serve uh, is not discouraged by our past. Anybody glad about that today? I, I'm glad today that the God that we serve does not move himself away from us because he knows about our past. Now you know some folk who like to shun you when, you, when they hear, hear about you in the news and hear about what you used to do or what you used to be. Well, God is not like that, praise almighty God. And he moves toward us instead of away from us. And so the word of God tells us today that if you have a past, your past does not have to dictate your present or your future. As real as your past is, the grace of God is more real. Didn't you read in Romans chapter 5 and verse 20 where the Bible says where sin abounds, grace. Anybody know about grace today? Grace does much more abound. 
I'm glad today that God's grace is greater than my past. His grace is greater than anything that has happened to me or that I have done in my past. Praise Almighty God. Everybody's past has something in it that's contrary, but God still cares about us. Praise Almighty God. And he wants us, talking about the devil, the devil wants us to always remember what we used to be instead of recognizing who we are in Christ Jesus and what we can be because of the grace of Almighty God. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible tells us that while we were yet what? While we were sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't, he didn't run from us. He didn't take off in a different direction when you heard about our past. But the Bible says while we were messed up, he drew closer to us. That's what I love about the God that we serve. He doesn't move away from me when I need him the most. He moves closest to me when I need him the most. Now, I, I, I've been in some situations. Anybody been in some situations where, where, where folk, when you really needed somebody, you really couldn't find anybody? Now, before the situation occurred, or they, were, they were all on your side. But when they found out about your past, or when they found out about the situation you got yourself in, then they found themselves moving further and further away from you. You see, too, too often our past has influenced our present. We allow our yesterdays to cause us to believe the worst about ourselves today. Let me read that again. We allow our yesterdays to cause us to believe the worst about ourselves today. And it's contrary to scripture. Because we just read in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if I am in Christ, I am a new creation. All things are passed away. And how much has become new? All things. I'll become new. I'm talking about praise God indeed, my sister. All things have become new. And it's not because I feel like it. Yes, sir. Let's, let's let help, let help us understand, Holy Ghost, today. I may not feel like I'm a new person in Christ Jesus, but if God says I'm a new person, yes, yes, hey, what about it now? If God says I'm a new person, then I'm a what? I'm a new person. And that's why, how the devil gets us traps us in our past because we go up with the thought how do I feel about the situation how, how do I think it ought to be you see when the person does wrong we naturally recognize that there is a consequence that has to be paid but I'm thankful today that the Bible says that Jesus went to the cross and he took my consequence so if he took him for himself my consequence, then that means I am delivered from it. I'm free of it. And as John said, as Jesus said in John 8, 36, that he that hath the Son is not just free, he's free indeed. Praise Almighty God. I'm talking about, see, the truth of God is an amazing thing, thanks to God. Because if we really believe what God said, we would be free indeed. But we can't experience that true freedom because we just can't come to grips with what God says about us when we know us. See, we know us. Because we were there when it occurred. <laughs> uh, yeah, you were there when it occurred. So you know yourself. And so you tell yourself, well, God... I don't know if that's true about me. But God says, he wants us to understand, it's true about anybody who believes it. It's true about anybody who believes it. It's true anyhow, but you will experience that freedom if you believe it. 
You will receive it if you will allow yourself to believe that what God said, God could, can bring the past by the grace of Almighty God. You see, just because something bad happened to you, 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 you don't have to allow that thing to always plague every step of your life. And there are some bad things that happen in our lives that we were not responsible for. And yet we still feel guilty about. Some bad things that happened to us, somebody else did something to us. Inflicted that situation on us. Molested or even. And as a result, we feel guilty even though innocent. And the word of God wants us to understand that God does not place guilt on the innocent. He places guilt on the one that's guilty. We don't have to accept guilt for anybody's wrongdoing. We don't have to feel guilt for anything that somebody else perpetrated on us. Because in Christ Jesus, we are free indeed. The devil wants our past to continue to plague us because he knows that if he can cause our past to plague us, we will not experience the joy of the Lord. David teaches us how to deal with our past in Psalms 51. Let's turn there today. Talking about our past is not our present today. In the book of Psalm 51, David helps us with this prayer that he prays. And you, you, you remember, David, I'm sure you are aware of his past life as well. How he saw a young lady one day on his rooftop, and she was on her rooftop minding her business. And David should have been minding his business. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the Bible says that when he found himself at home, the Bible tells us that it was a time when kings went to war. So if David had been doing what he should have been doing, he'd have been fighting a war instead of wondering about what can I do right now, I'm bored. You see, when we are doing what God has already assigned us to do, we won't find ourselves uh, bored as it were or in a situation where we don't know what we're doing and we end up in a situation that we wonder how we got there. And so David should have been at war at home. He peeped this lady on a rooftop and instead of doing like Joseph and running away from her he had one of his men servants or lady servants run toward her and tell her, let her know I, I just want to talk to her. Just want to have a little conversation. I'm the king and I just want to know how she's doing and uh, how's her husband doing, Uriah. And as they started talking, David started saying, well, I know you're a little lonely. Why don't you come a little closer? And it got real ugly. You know, it got messy for sure. And as a result... David committed adultery. He tried to get his, the man Uriah to come home and sleep with his wife, but Uriah was more honorable than David. Uriah told the king, how can I sleep with my wife and I got fellow soldiers out there on the battlefield? King said, wow. Uh, I wish I had thought about that. But since he hadn't thought about that, Unfortunately, he had to come up with a plan, an evil plan, to try to hide what he did. The little children's story talked about it's best to tell the truth first than lie and get in even worse trouble. And that's what happened because of David's situation. He tried to cover that up, then he tried to cover something else up, ended up killing the wife or the husband of Bathsheba. David was guilty, adultery, guilty of a man getting murdered, and the devil wanted him to continue to have that weight of his past on his life. 
And let's be clear, David was completely wrong. What he did was evil, wicked. But the grace of God forgives the worst of the worst. That, that's what makes our God so amazing. That's what makes our God so awesome because he forgives the worst of the worst. Hallelujah indeed. Now, now when the worst of the worst was perpetrated on you, on somebody that you love, you're not really as excited about God forgiving that individual. Anybody understand what I'm saying today? See, see if somebody harms my child, I'm not, I'm not trying to forgive them just yet. Maybe after I get some vengeance, then I might be willing to forgive and, and think they ought to have some mercy after I done beat the mess out of them. But, 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 but God is not like that, praise Almighty God. Uh, he, he is more than willing to forgive the worst of the worst, praise Almighty God. And if he's, if he's willing, and he is, praise God, if he's willing to forgive the worst of the worst, then that means he's also willing to forgive you and he's willing to forgive me. That's why Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, if you're in Christ, your past is behind you. I, I don't care, Paul said, it doesn't matter what you did. In Christ Jesus, your past is behind you. Your stuff might have been in the paper, but if you turn to Christ Jesus, your past no longer defines you. The church may have voted you out because of what you did, but if you return to Christ, your past is behind you in Christ Jesus. Praise Almighty God. And the devil doesn't want us to believe that our past can be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. So let's turn to Psalms 51. In Psalms 51, look how David prayed. In, in verse 1 of Psalms 51, the Bible says, David prayed, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, Blot out my transgressions. You see, when you've made a mess, you got to fall on the mercy of God. And I'm glad today that his mercy is willing to envelop you with his grace and his love. And he's willing to blot out your transgressions. Verse 2 says, wash me thoroughly, thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. And verse 3 is, is crucial because I acknowledge my transgression. You got to ask God to forgive you for that deed that you committed. Lord, I, I admit I was wrong. I admit I'm, I'm guilty. I admit I ought to experience a greater sentence than the, you want to give me. But because of your mercy, you always give me grace. He says, my sin, verse 3, that before me, is before me against thee, and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge. We all know verse 5, I was shaped in iniquity, David said, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Then he says in verse 7, purge me with hyssop. And I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He says in verse 7 once again, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. 
In other words, there will be no evidence of your past. Ain't God an awesome God? See, when God comes into your situation and deals with your past, he purges us such, he cleans us so, so purely that our past has no part of our present or our future. Praise the name of Almighty God. And when we allow the grace of God to, to cause us to believe that we are clean, to believe that we have been washed truly by the grace of Almighty God, then as verse 8 says, we can begin to have the joy of the Lord. As he said in verse 8, make me to hear joy and what? And gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Praise Almighty God. When you make a mess, you feel miserable. When you go contrary to God, you, 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 you feel as if you can never experience the blessing of God in your life again. You feel as if the joy that you had before that deed can never return. But I'm thankful today that, that God wants us to understand as David prayed that day that the joy of the Lord that is absent from our life because of that past act. When we fall at the knee, at the feet of Jesus, when we bow in his presence, he can begin to restore the joy of the Lord in our lives. And I say hallelujah, praise the name of Almighty God. You see, the devil always wants us to be sour. He always wants us to be discouraged. He always wants us to be full of sadness. But even though our past is real, the grace of God is more real. Even though what we have done can be documented, I'm glad that the blood of Jesus can wash the documents clean. Praise Almighty God. He can, he can wash it clean, and if we believe that the blood of Jesus is able to wash it clean, like David fall at the feet of Jesus and cry out, Wash me, O Lord, and I shall be clean, purge me with hyssop, and allow God's grace to make a difference in your life by the grace of Almighty God. God in his mercy wants us to understand that our past no longer has the authority that it had before we met Jesus Christ. Before we met Christ, our past was stronger, but in Christ, it's weaker. You see, the past meets its match when it meets the God of the universe. That the past meets somebody that's bigger when it meets the one who sits on the throne of God. And when we come to God and say, Lord, I know I messed up. I know I got a situation in my past that, that I wish were not there. But the word says, uh, come unto me. Yes, Matthew Lord. says, all you labor to heaven, lady, I'll give you rest. I'll make it right. I'll make it clean, God said. In fact, I'll give you joy like you never thought you could experience yes, because I'm God all by myself. Yes, you see, my, my past wants me to remain in the doldrums of life. It wants me to remain discouraged and, 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 and defeated. But I'm grateful today that God is greater than my past. I said he's greater than my past. And because he's greater than my past, I must stop allowing my past to influence my present. Got to call, got to fall on my knees and say, Lord, today... I allowed my past to dictate this decision. Anybody hear me today? You see, you say, you say, Lord, I allowed what I used to be to cause me to think I couldn't experience what you promised in your word. And you say, Lord, please forgive me. Because the word of God says that if I'm in Christ, my past no longer matters anymore. Because God is greater than my past. Praise Almighty God. 
Some folk want to keep you down because of your past. Even your own thought processes want to keep you discouraged because of your past. But God is not the one who will keep you back because of your past. In fact, the God that we serve is so awesome, he takes us to an even higher place in spite of my past. That's what makes God so awesome. See, I messed up. And the world says, because you messed up, I will demote you. That's what the world says. And, and I understand this position. I'm not, I'm not against that position because the Bible even says, whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. But God says, there's a higher law. Talking about the grace of God. Yeah, there, there, there's a higher law. And, and, and God says, even though you messed up and the world demoted you, when you come to me, God says, I will take you to a higher position. I'm talking about the restoration of God's grace today. See, God's grace does not make sense to the normal mindset. God, God's grace does not make sense to those who, who believe that everything has to be based on whatever your soul, that's what you're going to reap. God says, uh-uh-uh. In my world, God says, there's a thing called grace. And grace allows the worst to still get promoted as if they were the best. I said, Lord have mercy. What kind of God can be so merciful? What, what kind of God can be so gracious that he is willing to take the worst and allow them to be promoted to the highest place? That's why you better stop allowing your past to, to dictate your present or your future. Because God is not the one trying to keep you down. He knows about your past. That's why Romans 5 8 says, while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. While you were messing up, he knew what was happening, but he still went to the cross. Because he's got a plan for your life and my life. Praise Almighty God. How does Jeremiah put it? My thoughts about you are thoughts of peace, not of evil, God says, to give you an expected end. Praise Almighty God. God desires to raise us higher that we can ever imagine and it's not about us it's about his grace it's about his grace and if, if I would lean on Jesus more than I do, talking about you and me if we would lean on him more and more and more we'll stop believing in the power of our past and we'll start believing in the power of Jesus what did the Sabbath school lesson member verse say this week? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, I got all power in my hands. There ain't no situation that I've come across that I can't handle, God says. If you bring it to me, God says, I can deal with it. Oh, yes, I can, he said. With men, it's impossible. But not with God. For with God... All things are possible. And so today, my brothers and my sisters, don't allow your past to control your present. Don't allow your past to, be, to, to, to define your future. Go to what the Word says, because the Word says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, praise Almighty God. Behold, all things are become new. And every now and then, you got to say, Lord, help me to believe it. Help me to believe I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Help me to believe that even though I feel like a nobody, that in Christ Jesus I am a somebody. I, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Jesus. I don't need to know your past personally. God knows your past and he can deal with your past. And he says no matter how messy your past is, just give it to me. He just give it to me. He says, because he, God says, I got some plans for you. 
But if you keep on believing in your past, you can't fulfill the dream I have for your life. If you keep believing that you can't go but so far because of what you did last year or, or long time ago, God says, I can't take you where I'm trying to take you. How does Paul put it in Colossians? He says, we've been delivered from the powers of darkness. And the God of heaven has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Ephesians 2, 6 says we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. We're heirs of God, joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today I know we all have a past, but that's why the blood of Jesus Christ is so awesome. Because it washes away as Paul, as David prayed, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me. I shall be whiter, not white as snow, but whiter than snow. I'm talking about the grace of God today now. I'm talking about the grace of God today. You see, see, God's grace wants us to understand he can do miraculous things regardless of your past. Your past doesn't have the last word. God's got the last word, praise Almighty God. And I'm glad about it. What about you today? I'm glad he's got the last word. How does John 10.10 10 put it? The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's done a mighty good job, hasn't he? He's done a mighty good job. He's messed up a lot of our lives. But that's not the end of the verse, praise God. Well, that's not the end of the verse. It says, but Jesus came. I know the devil came, but Jesus also came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Anybody want that abundant life today? Anybody want that abundant? I know you've been stolen from by the enemy. I know you've been ripped off. I know stuff in your life has died. But Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life, he says. And if I call you from the dead, you got to come forth. You remember Lazarus, don't you? You remember Lazarus. Mary Martha said, Jesus, don't, don't even go there. Don't even go there. The, my brother been dead for four days. It ain't no help for him. Anybody today feel like it ain't no help for you today? Huh? Anybody feel like there's no help for you today? Jesus said, I can change that situation. He showed up at Lazarus' tomb, rolled away the stone. They said, by now, the Lord, he stinks. Jesus said, I'm going to make him sweet. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They rolled away the stone. Jesus cried out, Lazarus, come forth. He knows your name today. He'll call you by name if you just call out to him. If you just look toward him, he'll say, come forth. I got a plan for your life. I want to take you higher in Christ Jesus. I know the devil got you down, but I want to take you higher. He says, I want to take you higher, my son, my daughter, because I, I know the plans the song says I have for you. I, I know what I got in store for you, and it's not based on your past. It ain't based on your past. He says it's based on my grace. It's based on his grace. And his grace is amazing. His grace is amazing. He's able to turn anybody's life around if they just fall at his feet. Just fall at his feet. Like David. You know you've done wrong. Excuse that bad grandma. You know you have done wrong. But just fall at his feet. Amen. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. That's what David cried out in Psalms 51 and verse 1. He says, have mercy on me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. Blot out my transgressions, O Lord. I know I don't deserve to be forgiven. We don't deserve to be forgiven. But he's more than willing to forgive us. See, that's what makes the God that we serve so awesome. It's not about what you deserve. God gives us what we don't deserve. But there are folk who will tell you, you can't have what God has for you. They tell you, you can't have it because I know your past. You can't have it because I know what you used to do. 
You, you can't have it because I know what you used to be. But you don't, 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 don't believe those lies. Because the devil is a liar. And the truth ain't in him. It ain't in him. But the God that we serve speaks truth. And he says, you come to me, I will receive you. Not only will I receive you, he says, he says, I will exalt you to a high place. Oh, what an awesome God we serve. See, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you believe what God says, get ready because he's getting ready to do something special in your life. Our past is not who we are. When we come to Jesus, we are who God says what we are. We are heirs of God. We join heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And though you may have been allowing your past to dictate your decisions of late, don't do it any longer. Ask God to forgive you. So, Lord, I've been allowing my past. Just, just, just tell them, Lord, I've been allowing my past to dictate my decisions. And, and I'm, I'm asking for your forgiveness. Because from this day forward, I want to believe in the grace of God. I want to believe in it. What about you? You want to believe in the grace of God today? You, you want to believe that God's got something special in your life for you today? Do you want to believe that God is, is greater than your past? Do, do you believe that God is, is who he really says he is? He is God all by himself. He wants to turn everybody's life around. Not just some folk. Not just folk who went to a special school or who had a special... He wants to turn everybody's life around. You ain't even got to have an education. He said, just call on me. He says, I'm God. I can, I, can, I can take you higher than you ever imagined if you trust in me. So today, by the grace of God, the Bible says if you're in Christ, you are a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are now new in Christ Jesus. I'm asking God to help me to believe that. Do you want to believe that for yourself as well today? If you want to believe that great truth today, that in Christ you are a new creation, that in Christ old things are passed away, and in Christ all things are become new, don't you just raise your hand right where you are as I pray today. Father God, very grateful that because of Calvary, our past does not have to define our present or our future. Because of Calvary, our past is broken by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of Calvary, Father God. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. Though we've allowed our past to dictate our decisions, today we ask, oh God, that from this day forward, we will make decisions based on the goodness of God, based on the forgiving power and nature of God, based on the power of God. We believe we believe, Father, that in the name of Jesus, that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. You can take your hands down now. I'm still praying. I got a second appeal. Somebody today recognizes the church is praying. On this second appeal, I, somebody recognizes time for them to make a decision to become a part of God's commandment keeping church. The voice of God is speaking to your heart, and you recognize it's time for you to make that decision. You, you. You've been going back and forth in your mind. You've been wondering, is, is it time? It's time. It's time. The Bible says, now is the time. What about a young lady? What about it, my brother? What about, what about it today? The voice of God is speaking to your heart. And you recognize it's time for you to make that decision today to prepare for baptism. 
Why don't you just raise your hand right where you are? Say, by the grace of God, God bless you, my brother. God bless you. There's another one who wants to make that decision today. What about it? Today, the Bible says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Young lady, he's calling you today. He's calling you today. The church is praying. Somebody desires freedom, Father God, and we are asking you to free them in the name of Jesus today. What about it, young lady? Today, the Bible says, today, 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 today. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. What about him? Is there another one today? Is there another brother today who wants to make that decision to follow God all the way? Is there another who wants to make that decision? He's calling you today. He's calling you today. What about it, young lady? What about it, my sister? He's calling you. He's calling you. My brother, won't you just stand? We're going to have a special prayer for you. Father God, as he stands, as he, as he declares by his upward position that he wants to follow in your footsteps all the way, we plead the blood of Jesus in his behalf. We ask your Father God to help him to hold on to your unchanging hand. Grant him the grace that he needs to be faithful to the end so that he along with all of us who love you can hear the words from your lips. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. God bless you. You can be seated. God bless you in your decision today. Before I close, before I close, somebody else today, I believe, needs to also make a decision. Somebody else needs to make a decision. What about a young lady? What about a young man? He's calling you. He's calling you. Father, we thank you. Amen. Thank you. How many have been baptized by the grace of God today? How many have been baptized? I thank you. As we close, my heart gets burdened when one of my members has something happening physically with them. And I just want to pray. Pray for them. Come here, Lisa. I want to pray for you. Richard, come. Come here, Richard. I'm going to pray. I believe that God has power that he can heal. I believe it. I believe it. I want my elders to join me. I'm going to pray for Lisa. I believe God can do something. It's just a burden on my soul. I don't want to see none of y'all hurt. None of you. I just want to ask God, touch, 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 touch. I want his power to work in such a mighty way. That's what we come to church for, to experience the power of God. If you just lay hands... both he and her and Richard. Father, there's something just burning in my soul to bring Lisa to you. Oh, it's not anything bad. But you've used them to bless our church through family life. And the enemy is seething, angry, mad. He wants to disrupt such a beautiful ministry. Disrupt by trying to cause illness. But we believe, we heard today, that your power is far greater. Far greater. This young lady, as she stands in your presence, oh God, we're all right believing all the things you did in the Bible fine with that but I believe oh God the same power you exercised back then you can do today if you can take someone that had a problem for 12 years surely you can help this one too 
men born blind. You've given them the ability to see. Men who couldn't walk, you gave them the ability to walk. You did so much. I want to ask that you would touch Lisa. You would give her relief. That even though doctors can say whatever, we're asking you to work, oh God. So may you grant her the relief on whatever be whatever is ailing her. You give her the relief. Oh God, and the joy, the joy of serving you, oh God, will know far and wide what you can do. Far greater than human he, human beings could ever do, you can do. So may you touch Lisa, reliever of this illness. Open the joy of God in her heart to know that you're able. That's her husband, her family. So they work closely by her side. Keep her close to you, oh God. But please, won't you do this for us? Touch her, touch her. Touch the problem. Send it on its way. Give her relief. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, our speaker will be here, we'll be here. Just a simple little service, but it will be so meaningful and helpful to all of us. We need to pray. And so I invite you, 7 o'clock to 8, just a quick little service, but it will be a joy in your soul. I should have a wonderful, wonderful Sabbath afternoon. And how about making someone glad? Let them know that Jesus forgives your past. You've got a bright future ahead. God bless. at the door if she will someone escort her to the door brother William Rodriguez where is it? want us to meet us at the door come on let's let's squeeze those fingers of that young man he took his stand last week and uh, yes come on sweetheart meet us at the door As we pass, we give them, squeeze those fingers and let them know we're glad to have them around here. All right. Good. Ah, oh, cut that out. Come on, man. As we go out, come on, sing that while we go out.
bless the Lord. Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah.